Hey yo, what is going on YouTube? My name is James and welcome back to another video. Today I'm actually going to be doing a review of the SKX009 that I got and I am very excited to do this review. It is a beautiful watch and I just want to say before I get into it that obviously I'm no watch expert. I want to make this clear every single time. Uh, I'm just someone who's really enthusiastic about watches. I love them and just like to review So a few more things. I'm recording this on Monday the 15th of August and this video I don't know when will be out. I just want to quickly say that I got a phone call for an interview for Fossil Watches. Uh, yes, I know that's not really what I I'm into like you know them sort of watches but at the end of the day I need a job right now and it's my foot into the watch industry so to say you know selling watches even though it's just a sales job at least it's doing something I am I enjoy I enjoy watches so um, you know and hopefully that will go well on Friday and I'll actually have a job there which will be awesome because I need a job right now I have no job so I'm taking anything hopefully I'll let you guys know after this video is released uh, what's happened over there just follow me on Twitter I have a vlogging channel as well which you can go subscribe to but also once I finish this review I'm going to be giving this watch to my dad for a while and I'm going to be taking his Seiko monster it's the first generation monster I think I'm going to steal that for about a week and he's going to have this for a week and the reason I'm going to do that is so I can review his monster but then also do a comparison video because I really want to compare this and the monster to see what's better but without any further ado let's get straight into this review change perspectives and uh, yeah let's just get on with it okay so here we go the way I'm going to do this review is I'm going to cover the real basics the facts of the watch and then I'm going to go into my personal pros of the watch and my personal cons of the watch um hopefully you can't hear all the kids outside it's like really hot summer day so everyone's outside and uh, there's a lot of kids around here and my hands are still completely messed up as you can tell so so i don't disturb with you guys i'm gonna wear the gloves also because it just is easier to wear the gloves so let me put these on real quick much better there we go let's zoom in to this beautiful piece and take a closer look so here we go this is the seiko skx 009 K2. Now the K2 on the end stands for made in Malaysia. Now the J is obviously made in Japan. Now the differences are there's extra writing on the dial with the Japan version. Other than that, according to uh, Seiko themselves, there's actually not a difference. Like there isn't a difference. Now this is the Pepsi dial as you can tell. That's what the 009 is all about. 007 is the black dial and black face. Uh, black dial and black face. Black dial and black uh, bezel. Whereas this is the navy blue with the red here. Um, this is obviously a diving watch, so let's get into the basics. We're going to start off with the size. It is case diameter. I've got my uh, calipers right here, so we're going to use this. Um, obviously, I've got it all written down anyway, but let's get into it. There is sellotape on the calipers. I feel like I have to make that clear. It's difficult to get a good hold on it. There we go. Around a 42 millimeter. No, it doesn't say 42, but it is a 42. The thickness is a very, very nice 13 millimeter. I actually have it down as 12. I don't know why. And look to look we are looking at around 22 millimeters even though it says 21 and a half but it's 22 <laughs> trust me i've done this um so there we go and what i think i'm going to do real quick as well let's take these out of the frame now i think we're going to weigh it we're going to weigh the watch as well now this is on the jubilee bracelet so obviously that is going to add a lot of weight to the watch but let's just see how much this beast weighs 135 grams yes that is pretty that's quite a heavy watch that's quite a heavy watch but yeah let me know if you like seeing the scale in the shot or not because i think it just adds you know a little bit extra to the to the video it gives us a, a rough size um, or weight that we can expect on the watch so obviously this is the stainless steel case it has a stainless steel case it has a jubilee bracelet now the finish on the case is very very nice it's a mixture of very sort of brushed with very high high polishing as you can see you can see the camera and me in that reflection which is just beautiful and as we come around here you can see that sharp sharp corner as it tailors towards the lugs it's beautiful as it thins out as it gets further down and then you've got this brushed along here it feels amazing and you've obviously got the crown at the four o'clock position it's a screw down crown and that shape around that around the crown guard is just beautiful i i love it so much it shapes off so nicely and you'd think a watch of this size having a crown at four o'clock with crown guards 
if you just think of that, you wouldn't think it'd work this well. And it really, really does. It looks beautiful. Now, obviously, I have it on the Jubilee bracelet right here. Jubilee bracelets are my favorite bracelets by far. I love the way they look. So that's just a personal preference of mine. But as you can see, it is a mixture, again, of brushed along here with very high polishing. In the middle, it looks absolutely brilliant. And it just is so comfortable. On the inside, let me see if I can show you guys that. You can see how smoothed out that is. You know, it feels great on the skin. It has a very, very nice designed case back, you know, with the with the tsunami wave in the in the middle right there you've got a full basic fold over clasp um right there with a seiko signed clasp so you pop that open like that and you pop that off it's one of the better better uh, clasps i've dealt with the basic fold over it's one of the better ones i've dealt with but it's still not really that great in my opinion i'd have preferred a button release here i think that just made it nicer sorry about that um so yeah there's the finishing out of the way obviously i've already covered the dial now it has the pepsi bezel now as it is a diver watch it is red up to the 20 minute marker now what that is for is to indicate a basic dive for those of you that don't know the average dive is between 15 and 20 minutes so this is kind of like the perfect way to time it and what you do is you'd bring this bezel round uh, it's a 120 click bezel um and it, it feels great it's a very high quality click there's not really a load of play like there's a tiny bit of play but nothing substantial and the way you time your dive is put this onto the minute marker and then you jump so you'd put it there and jump and then obviously you'd look down and you'd see where this minute marker is within this 20 or the red within the red and obviously as you get closer to here you start going okay i should start making my way back up now the movement inside this watch is the seiko 7s26 which is seiko's in-house movement it is a very very great movement now i've had this watch for a good two weeks now and i haven't had to change the time once which is just amazing because they rate this movement about plus or minus 20 seconds a day. Personally, I think it's more around 10 seconds a day, if that, because I haven't even had to change the time once on this watch. It has just been absolutely perfect, spot on pretty much the whole time, which makes me believe it's less than 10 seconds. Now, as I already mentioned, it is water resistant up to or down to 200 meters, which is just more than I'm ever, ever going to use, you know, maybe I'll take this into the sea one time, but other than that, I don't think I'll ever really go that much further. But it's cool to have a watch that you know if you are going to go further. You can. It has the hard lex crystal, which Seiko are famous for. There's a bit of controversy in the community on whether the crystal is really that good or not. Personally, I it's fine for me so far i've not had a single scratch on it but then again i haven't had this watch for a, for a while if you guys want me to do like a, a update after a month an update after a year let me know down in the comments now as you can see the crystal isn't domed or anything it's actually very flat the bezel has got this beautiful beautiful um edging around the sides that just feels great you know to the touch it's just and it makes it obviously a lot easier to turn as well which also has absolutely incredible loom now because i i still need to set up some sort of way to show this loom you know maybe set up a box or something where i can put the lens through and show off the loom um, i'm just going to quickly go to a picture so Okay, so welcome back. Hopefully I just put up a picture, maybe two of the of the loom of this watch. It is amazing loom, very, very good. Though I do have to say, it doesn't seem to last like a crazy amount of time. I haven't dealt with many watches like with this amount of loom. Uh, you know, I've got much more sort of regular <laughs> loomed watches, which have just got like the hands, maybe a few indices here and there, maybe pips. Um, but it's a very strong loom, but it doesn't seem to last that strong for a while. It definitely stays loomed for a while, but not of obviously that intensity, which is normal, but still, um, that, that's just a little tripe. Anyway, let's get on to the pros of this watch. Like I said, they're all the basic facts out of the way, you know, when it comes to the finish. We're going to get on to what I think are the pros and then what I think are the cons of this watch. Now, obviously, this is my opinion, so please, if you own this watch, Watch. Let me know what your pros and cons are down in the description. Let's get a little conversation going. So let's go into the thing I'm going to start off with is this watch looks amazing. Like I, I cannot fault the design of this watch. When I originally bought it, I looked at the size of it, you know, 42 mil, the shape of it. I was just like, that is not going to look right on my tiny wrist at all. But you know what? It wears really well. It's really, really comfortable. The way they've sort of tapered these lugs in, the way the finish is done, it's just absolutely beautiful. And with this bracelet, personally, I don't think it could get any better than this. Like I've seen it on the Oyster, I've seen it on the Rubber, I've seen it on NATO's. 
I just can't see it getting any better than this. I think it just works so damn well. It looks from a distance like a much more expensive watch than what it was. Now, real quickly, I paid £163 for this on Creation Watches. Now, real quickly, let me show it you on the wrist because I've not done that. So here it is on my pretty small wrist. I don't actually know the size of my wrist. I should probably get that done. My ideal size I've found is anywhere between 36 and 40. Um, you know, once we get over the 40 range, the watches do get quite large for me. Um, but as you can tell, this wears very, very nicely considering its size. And, you know, I've tightened it probably to what people would say is a little too tight. Like obviously it's not quite enough circulation and it does have a bit of wiggle. It's just the perfect sizing for me. I love my watches being like this and I just think it looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, by the way, I'm drinking a can of Pepsi. Huh. There was actually, this wasn't, this wasn't, um, <laughs> this wasn't planned out, I promise. I just have quite a bit of Pepsi. I love Pepsi. Anyway, let's get back into the review. So as I said, it's built incredibly. It has just a beautiful finish to the watch. You know, this is the highest, this is the most I've ever spent on a wash, a wash, a watch, and it is the best watch I've ever owned and probably ever will own for quite a while. But yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. I can't fault Another it. Another pro of this watch is the 200 meters wall resistant. Like I said, you can take this out in a thunderstorm. You can put it in, you know, the bath with you. You can do whatever you want and it will survive. You can go diving with it. It's a diving watch. It's certified diver as well. I can't remember what that's actually called, the certification it's got. Um, but yeah, it is a 100% certified diver and real divers use this watch which is freaking awesome like real divers not just like people who pretend to dive like real divers obviously it has this screw down crown at the four o'clock position which i really really like so let's take it out and then from this point obviously nothing happens you take it out one more and that is the date change and then you take it out one more and you've got the time now obviously this isn't a hacking or hand winding movement so it's just a generic automatic movement another real pro of this watch is the pepsi bezel at the end of the day you can tell that i like that and it would be a pro to me otherwise i'd have got the 007 um but I just love the really sort of dark navy blue that's almost black in certain lights. I think it's such a beautiful watch and in certain lights it just, lights, it just shines up such a lovely blue. And then with this red here, I cannot wait to see how this patinas over time. You know, if I'm going to end up with a real sky blue and pink sort of dial, I think that'd look beautiful. But yeah, I love the design of the watch. Now obviously the, the dial is very legible. You can very clearly see what the time is, you know, with them huge loom markers. Uh, they're applied loom as well, you know, the massive hands, the very clear seconds hand as well. It's just very legible. You can see the time from very far away without a problem at all. Now, as I said, the Jubilee bracelet is one of my favorite bracelets. I, I'm so glad I got it on this. I, yeah, pretty much my ideal watch is like an old Tudor or an old Rolex, you know, day date. And they most of them come on the Jubilees. So I just, I, I really like Jubilee bracelets. Another pro is the 120 click bezel. It is a very, very reliable bezel with like no play at all. Like, let me hold this watch as tight as possible. Look, there's no play in that at all. It being 120 clicks as well, you can really set it accurately. It's just a very smooth and lovely. Let, let's see if I can get you to hear that sound. So hopefully you heard that. It just sounds absolutely beautiful. I just can't get enough of it. I'll sort that out. Another thing is it's a solid timekeeper. Like it has a solid movement in it. The 7S26, it's a brilliant, fantastic movement. I cannot fault it for accuracy and it has a great power reserve of around 40, 40 hours, I think is what they state, 42 hours or so. But I, I've not had it actually stop on me yet. But then again, I have been wearing it like every single day. I've been really sort of pretty much insulting my other watches since this one's come along because they don't get any wrist time anymore. Now, obviously, it has the standard day date function as well, which I really like because I always forget the date. Um, never really the day, uh, but I always forget the date. So it's a handy little feature for me. And plus, I like it on there. You know, I think it evens out the dial, even though it's a very, it ruins the, the so called sim symmetry of the the watch but i quite like that it. 22 millimeter lug size is another pro in my opinion because that's just a perfect size for all kinds of straps i'm actually thinking of getting a very nice worn like very worn collar red you know really sort of worn thick leather uh strap to put on this i think it'll look really beautiful if you have any suggestions of which ones i should get let me know down below now we're going to get onto the cons which there aren't many of it like i have to be honest there's not many cons for this watch i i actually had to full-on really look there's only one thing I think is a is a 
it's not really a con because at the end of the day the, the movement it has is fine but it's just maybe would make it that little bit better. This movement obviously has no hacking or no manual wind. I think that would have just really pushed this movement to the next level. I just hope you know now that this watch is discontinued the next ones they replace them with which is apparently the turtles but I don't know a few people have said there may be something else up Seiko sleeve which I'm excited for if there is but hopefully it will have hacking manual winding movements you know at the end of the day the new the new Orient Mako has hacking and manual wind and is a brilliant price so you know it can be done and I think it would just make the movement a whole lot better. Another thing is the 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 bezel I just wish it was unidirectional instead of like whatever the other one's called um um, is it omnidirect? No, I don't know. Just single directional. I just wish it was unidirectional so I could go back the other way. But I think that's done for, for water resistance or something. I can't remember the reason. Someone someone did tell me. I'm sorry. You should get it that one bit extra over and then you have to go all the way back around. It's kind of a pain in the arse. And another thing is it's not really a, a full on con of the watch because Hardlex is great. But I think Sapphire would have just been amazing to, to have Sapphire in this watch. And I know there's a lot of people out there who actually, once they get this watch, they immediately swap out the the hard legs for a sapphire and I'm considering it myself because I do think sapphire would be a lot better for this watch but you know according to some people hard legs is just as great but according to some other people it's terrible so I just don't know but you know it's price range I don't think there's many watches if any that actually do sapphire but there's there's my cons of the watch so to conclude this review I tried to make this review as pure bare bone as possible pure simple covering the basics the pros and the cons of the watch that is it for this review I just wanted it to be very basic so I think the quality of this watch for the price is phenomenal. I think you're getting a lot of watch for such a bargain. Right now they're around 161 to 170 pounds on websites. I think if you're thinking of getting with one of these watches, you need to pick it up now because obviously it's been discontinued. So these watches are gonna start becoming a bit more rare. Plus they're freaking beautiful. Like look at them, they're just so damn nice. Definitely pick one of these beauties up if you can. And another thing, it was obviously rated my number one diver in my best of, uh, my best divers under 200 pounds range. I just think, for the price, you cannot go wrong with a watch like this. And at the end of the day, I did my uh, my Is Kibble Talks watches video where I spoke about does price equal quality? And this watch right here just proves that price doesn't always equal quality. You know, you're paying 161 to 163 pounds and you're getting such a quality watch with such a quality movement, with just so many great features. It is such a beautiful watch and it's only costing you about 160 pounds. Now, a few people have even compared this watch to the watches that are 1,000 pounds plus, and say, and this is one, this is one over them watches. So, I don't know, like there's a lot to be said of that, and I just think you can't go wrong for the price. But anyway, let's take it back to the other, the other view and finish up this review. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed that review of the beautiful SKX009. If you think I missed anything at all, please don't be afraid to let me know down in the comments. At the end of the day, I'm still fairly new to this so please if you have constructive criticism do leave it for me because I appreciate it at the end of the day I want to learn as well you know I'm not claiming to be the master of this definitely not so please do help me along this journey as well but like I said I'll be giving this watch to my dad for about a week whilst I have his monster so yeah I'm very looking forward to reviewing that watch so keep an eye out for that I'm also looking forward to doing the comparison between these two so it should be a very very fun video I've got some things planned ahead now I'm so ahead of myself in terms of videos, you know, this is recorded on Monday the 15th and it's going live on Saturday. The reason I'm so ahead of myself is because I've got a lot of things coming up. Um, so I just wanted to really get ahead of myself, get a lot of videos pumped out so that way I can just sort of focus on other things and still bring you guys some great quality content, or at least I hope it's great quality content. Yeah, if you're liking what I'm doing on this channel, please do leave a like, consider subscribing as well. It all helps more than you realize. You know, if you've got people out there who are your friends and they really enjoy watches as well, definitely point them in my di direction. Don't forget to submit your collection as well. Uh, the email link is down below. But thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you all again in the next video, guys. Take care, peace out.